One of the biggest examples of classical architecture in Yekaterinburg is the house, we can even say the palace of a family of merchants, tax farmers, and gold miners. The family, the Rastrogoyevs and Khoritonovs. Yet in the 19th century, local people called this mansion the local Parthenon, as it rose highly above the city skyline, just as the real Parthenon in Athens. This is a very typical example of the Russian classical style. Construction was done in several stages by many different architects, and even today, researchers have not been able to name precisely who designed it. Without any doubt, though, it was the famous local architect Malakov who finished the project. Mikhail Pavlovich Malakov worked in Yekaterinburg from 1815 to 1842. His most famous projects, apart from the mansion of the Rastrogoyas Kharatonos, were the buildings of the Mining Industrial Drugstore, the Euro Mining Administration, the Lapidori Factory of Yekaterinburg, and the Mining Director's House on the Isert River. Originally, the house was built according to all of the classical rules. It had symmetrical axial planning with four porches on its four sides. But then, as the new owners came, it grew and developed. The mansion itself became bigger. New horse stables and outbuildings appeared. The whole composition was extended in the eastern direction. A new building appeared with a low flat cupola with entrance and columns. Furthermore, there appeared a church aisle with a private church. The owners were old believers, and therefore, they built their own church. And of course, the relief decorations were very exquisite. Among them, the capitals of the Corinthian order. Irreproachable work. Roses on the cornice and modulions. The fence was particularly amazing. There was no other fence like this one. It was exquisite with its columns and cast iron cells. The gates were especially remarkable. There were many gates, and all had columns of the Ionic and Corinthian orders. Rastrogoyev built here an English-style park with winding alleys and radial pathways, which led from the rotunda pavilion situated on the hill. These pathways led down to the pond. Unfortunately today, the rotunda is lost. Right beside this rotunda, next to it, there's a basement of another park building, very typical for this kind of landscaped garden of the classical period. It's a cavern, a cold cellar where the wines from the Rhine were held and ice cream was made. Above the cavern, there was a Chinese-style pavilion with a table in the center. There was a hole under the table and a small elevator working from a winding barrel, so ice cream, ready to eat, could be raised and served to visitors right there on the pavilion. Only a few people today know about this. There are a lot of conjectures also concerning the rotunda on the island in the middle of the pond. According to the plans and designs of the 19th century, on the island of the artificial pond there is no building at all. The pavilion on the island appeared during the reconstruction of the years from 1935 to 1937, which was held under the direction of architect Yemelyanov. It has no cupola. It seems to be surprising, but there never was one. Because this is not really a pavilion, it's a fountain. The jets of water would spring out from the center of the rotunda and form a cupola made of water. The construction remains in good condition, though the fountain is not here anymore. By the way, several films were shot here. The Privilov Fortune, based on the story which took place here, in this house, told by Dmitry Mamin Subirak. In the first film of the Sverdlovsk film studio, the film Silva, The Gypsy Princess, the screen adaptation of an operetta by Emmerich Kalman, was shot here in this mansion and in the park in 1942.